Friday, January 14th, 2022, Monaco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. So today we're going to look at silver and the collapse of empires. Uh, and uh, I'm going to recommend a great video I found yesterday. Uh, it's called Ancient Coins, Roman Hyperinflation by Classical Numismatics. I highly recommend this video. I, I also subscribe to the channel. Uh, I haven't listened to all, all his other videos, but I think if this video was so good, the channel must be good. Uh, it's about 20 minutes long. I'm going to parallel what happened in Rome in antiquity to what's happening today and what's happened in the last hundred years or so. I, I think uh, like uh, classical numismatics said, uh, what happened to silver in Rome, uh, some people argue whether it was the cause of the collapse or whether it was the symptom. I think it's a bit of both. And I think it's the same thing happening today, even though we haven't used silver uh, as money since the uh, 1960s. So <laughs> silver goes back a long time. And, and I think the important thing about silver for empires is that uh, it's a symptom. The fact that silver uh, was debased, for example, in Rome. Uh, and uh, this is what he talks about a lot, the debasement of the coin coinage, how by the end of the third century, there's basically almost no silver in the coinage. Uh, by uh, the end of the second century, there is still uh, about 75, 78% silver. So it was really in the third century that things accelerated. And he talks about, of course, how that led to the collapse of the Roman economy because uh, w what happened is that people uh, weren't stupid, of course. They realized that uh, the emperors were cheating. Uh, what they used to do with the coinage in the beginning when they started really debasing it, uh, uh, they uh, had a process to, to keep the copper hidden and the silver would show up outside. But Soon enough, people realized those coins were not uh, one denarius of silver, which was, I think, about three grams. That's what it was supposed to be. And when Rome was at, a, uh, at its peak, so to speak, I guess from as an empire in the first two centuries AD, the denarius was about 93, 95% silver. So, people adjusted. <laughs> if the coinage only had 50% silver, they would adjust the prices higher because they knew there wasn't enough silver. And that's how you got rising prices. And then at the end, towards the uh, end of the third century and then uh, the fourth century and so on, uh, the coinage basically became just brass and then prices just went through the roof, the economy collapsed. There were some reforms by Aurelian that he talks about where the, they made a bigger coin and they, and they actually wrote on it uh, XXI, which meant 20 parts copper and one part silver. So there was 5%, I think in the 10 gram coin, I think the uh, denarius, during the heights of the Roman Empire, it was just over three grams. So that helped a little bit, but it was never the same. And uh, if you can't pay your troops, if you don't have uh, a strong economy, uh, that, that's what uh, I, I think uh, is the problem here. And that's how, what the parallels are with what's going on today, what happened in the British Empire and what's happening now in the American Empire, if you want to call it. So. Um, yes, uh, one of the questions is whether uh, it was a symptom or the cause. Uh, I think it's a bit of both because if you uh, debase the currency, of course, you're cheating on people. And that's what uh, classical numismatics uh, says. Uh, but you also... Uh, signaling that not, uh, things are not good, that you're having to spend more than you, you're taking in. So 
and I guess the Roman Empire overextended as well. But uh, before I look into what's going on today, and I think this is one of the reasons why silver and gold, of course, but I'm focusing on silver today. It's one of the reasons why the uh, powers that be, the bankers, don't want people <laughs> protecting themselves with silver. And the other thing they don't want is uh, the price signal. Uh, they don't want to see silver above 50 because uh, I think that would be a huge signal of the collapse of the American or Anglo-American empire, which I think is a financial empire. We can call it that now. Since 1980, we've had huge financialization and silver is a spanner in the works, but it's also a symptom, I think. Uh, if you look at uh, some of the indicators I'm going to look at, like GDP and debt today, uh, he also talks about classical numismatics, how money back in antiquity had to have intrinsic value because they didn't have fiduciary uh, payments like we have today, like promises. It wasn't as uh, w widespread, that kind of payment, because it was a different kind of world. And how we depend today on fiduciary currency, which is basically faith and confidence. Uh, but if you look back, it, it, it hasn't been that long that we've had that because we've had to have uh, real money up until the 1960s. Uh, and I think that's what it's all about, though, faith and confidence. And I think uh, uh, the price of silver going above certain levels is uh, a, a real problem for the bankers. <laughs> and some people might say, oh, silver is not important anymore. Well, if it, if it wasn't important, how come JP Morgan and the other banks like Bank of America, uh, the Fed, why they're uh, trying to control the price? So just wanted to talk a little bit as well about how uh, even modern empires have had their coins debased, especially silver coins. And in this case, I'm going to look, look at the British Empire and the American Empire for, for, uh, as well. So here I've got a, a florin from 1918, which is sterling silver, so 9 to 5 silver. Uh, and uh, it's debatable when the British Empire collapsed. It wasn't all at once, of course, it was gradual, but I would say by the mid 50s and the Suez crisis, that, that's when everything really, when Britain couldn't do what it wanted anymore in the world stage, it was told to stop interfering in Egypt by the Americans. I think that was the end of it. And uh, yes, so after 1919, which is the end of World War I, uh, here's a, a 1937 florin. They look very similar, but I can tell you when you hold them, you can tell that it's not the same. So this has only got 50% silver. So people are not stupid as well. That's why prices uh, went up after World War I. That's why they also went up after World War II. Uh, Britain has had a lot of inflation uh, in the last hundred years. So uh, after World War II as well, up to 1946, the coinage had 50% silver. But after 1947, the, all the silver was taken out. Is it any wonder that by the mid 50s, uh, the British Empire basically was gone? And then you've got today, the British coins. This is what we've got left. <laughs> Uh, that's a 10p coin, that's a 20p coin, copper, nickel, and, and the uh, florin, for example, that was the equivalent of 24 pence. So here you got 30 pence of copper, nickel. You can't really compare it, can you? And, and I think, uh, yes, it, it, it was a symptom that um, the British Empire overextended. It had too much debt basically because of the wars, I would say. And the, uh, the British economy went downhill and uh, it's never been the same. Yes, there have been uh, revivals, but they're not really based on 
a sound uh, money uh, economy. It's more based on a fiduciary credit induced uh, housing market uh, financialization dependent economy, I would say. Uh, and we go to America as well. Well, <laughs> up until 1964, I've got a quarter here from 1964, the year I was born. <laughs> Hence the, the name of my channel, Maneco64. Maneco is a nickname that I've always been given by my dad because we had the same name, Mario. So uh, at home and uh, with close family, I'm known as Maneco. So Maneco64. But here's a 1964 quarter. Uh, I'll show you here the year, as you can see. And that's 90% uh, silver. So the British had 925 silver, which is sterling. America had 90%. Um, and here, after 1964, I think for a few years, there was 40% silver, but basically they went off silver. Uh, I've got a quarter here from 1988. I mean, look at the difference. Uh, you can tell that it's, uh, this is uh, base metals, this is precious metals. 1988, there you go. So, um, the economy, and I think this is what it's showing. It, it, it's showing the collapse of the economy. Uh, it's showing that it, the economy has been overburdened by debt. And I think that's why it's so important that they keep uh, silver manipulated. I, I don't think they can do it forever. And that's why I keep stacking. And, and uh, you need patience, of course. These things don't happen overnight. Uh, the powers that be will fight till the end. But eventually when it... <laughs> I think it's all about faith and confidence because uh, we have a fiduciary monetary system. It's basically based on faith and confidence. The other thing it's based upon is the taxing power of the United States and any other uh, empire, I, I guess, or country nowadays. But the problem with that is that uh, when you uh, overburden the public, the state, with so much debt, you, you kind of... Uh, overburden the economy and why is that well because governments don't create wealth they just extract wealth so the more debt the government has it and the more spending it does the the smaller the private sector gets uh, the less um, productive and prosperous the private sector gets and this is why GDP if you look here this is from 1961 GDP has been trending down ever since then. And uh, yes, there are uh, recessions here when GDP goes below zero. But if, uh, if you look after the 08 crisis, uh, you've had only two years where GDP grew by 3%. And that was 2018 and 2015. Uh, even the supposed uh, great economy uh, of President Trump. Uh, GDP never matched uh, what it was prior to, let's say, the year 2000. Even in the 2000s, you, you got 3.8% GDP growth in 2004. But uh, look, look back from uh, 1980 to 2000, you had many years uh, where you had GDP above 3 or even 4%. Uh, back in the uh, 70s, which is known as a stagflationary uh, economy, you had GDP growth above 5%. And why is that? Well, because government and the debt has become so intrusive on, on the real economy. And I think uh, silver is a symptom of that, the price of silver. Is it any wonder that the price of silver is going from under $2 in the 60s, and it's now almost $30. And I think it's still heavily undervalued, of course. And uh, I have a feeling the movement of the price of silver 
is going to show panic. Uh, and, and when that happens, that you can bet, in my opinion, that it's uh, going to be a symptom of the loss of faith and confidence in the fiduciary currency. Uh, it's not really a dollar because a dollar is an amount of silver or gold as per the Coinage Act of 1792, of course. And uh, I'll show you uh, the debt because in 1980, when Volcker let rates into double digits, uh, the United States uh, still wasn't wasn't overburdened with that as it is today. If you look here, the, the debt to GDP back then was 35.3%. So the economy still had a lot of room to create uh, growth and to be able to, yes, <laughs> uh, basically continue the uh, American empire. You also had the petrodollar that helped. So there, there's there was a lot of faith and confidence. Uh, but uh, if you look at uh, where we are now in 2022, the debt to GDP is now 127%. And if you look uh, in the future, the forecast for 2026, it, it's going to be almost 200% of GDP. So I, I think we're almost there. I can't tell you when it's going to happen. And uh, if you look at Italy, for example, they've had debt to GDP over 130% for decades. And, and uh, that economy has done really badly, uh, the private economy in Italy. And um, so that's why I'm stacking. Uh, silver was money 2,000 years ago or 2,500 years ago in Greece. Uh, I just wanted to show you, I've got a tetra drachma uh, coin, Alexander the Great. So this coin is from 325 BC. So yeah, silver has been important for the economy and for empires for two and a half thousand years. And I don't think anything has changed. So uh, with that, <laughs> let's quickly look at uh, where the markets are this morning. It's uh, 10 to 9 a.m. Uh, we've got spot gold, 10 to 9 a.m. London, of course. We've got spot gold at 1826.50. It's up $4. Uh, we uh, made a high earlier today of 1829. That 1830 level, of course, is a, a key level. Yes, this is just the bankers playing with paper claims. And... Um, Eventually, <laughs> they can't keep doing this forever. If they could, uh, uh, the price of gold would still be at $35 an ounce, like it was prior to 1971. And the price of silver would be $1.29. I think that's what the price was. So, yes. <laughs> and that's why we need to keep stacking real gold and silver. I know the bankers hate that. But if we want to defeat them, we need to keep doing it. Uh, that's what I do. Uh, it's up to you to decide, of course. It's not advice. Uh, silver this morning is up 10 cents or half a percent, 23.20. High has been 23.32, the low 23.02. Uh, the Dow futures up 18. The NASDAQ futures down 20. S&P is uh, unchanged. Uh, the FTSE uh, 100 future is down 12 points. To the currencies, uh, sterling is up 0.2 of a percent, 137.34. The euro is up uh, 0.15 of a percent, 114.70. Uh, and the dollar is down uh, almost 0.4 of a percent versus the yen at 113.75. And the dollar is uh, down a, a third versus the yuan at 634.40. So yeah, dollars getting uh, hit hard versus the Asian currencies here or Far Eastern currencies. Aussie dollar is down. Well, it's actually on change, 72.81. Uh, the dollar is down a third versus the Canadian dollar, 124.76. And uh, the Kiwi dollar is unchanged, 68.62. 
quickly look at some of the commodities. We got WTI crude up three quarters of a percent, 82.14. High grade copper is down 0.2 of a percent at 453.50. And uh, US natural gas is down 1.6% at 407. And, and to finish off, quick look at the 10 year yield. We're at uh, 1.73, that's up uh, just over one basis point. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button. Please share it far and wide. Think about subscribing to my channel if you haven't yet. And you can also follow me on Rumble, Twitter, Facebook, and all these other platforms below here. I wish you all a great day. Take care. Bye.